This week, as your local election headquarters, we are taking our longest look yet at the two leading candidates in Indiana's U.S. Senate race. We are devoting an entire half hour to conversations with both Republican Mike Braun and Democrat Joe Donnelly, the incumbent. The candidates have not asked for ground rules or put anything off limits. We will ask each about their campaigns and their goals, why they feel the way they do about sometimes controversial issues, what they make of the current state of politics, and the reasons they want the job. Tonight's conversation is with the challenger, mm. Mr. Braun. Thanks for being with us today. Good to be here. Well, tell us from the start, I guess, that last point. Why do you want this job? I get asked that all the time, uh, along with do you need to have your head examined, uh, <laughs> closely followed. And I tell you, I, you know, growing up in Jasper, what a great place to I've been lucky enough to have been born there, and then my wife and I went to grade school together, high school together, and she went off to IU, and uh, I had a Wabash and uh, ended up living out east for two years, and I went to business school. And unlike uh, most back then in the late 70s, uh, we decided to move back to our hometown. And I think doing that said that you're just a little different in maybe the way you're going to approach life. and. Uh, Gosh, it was a great decision because we wanted to raise a family and we've been blessed with four kids and three of the four kids work in my business and she's only had one job, uh, started a home accessory and gift store back uh, in September 78, so that was 40 years, you know, this past September. I don't know where all the time's gone, but I mean, when you're blessed like that and uh, I started a business back in the early 80s, it took a long time to take off. and. Of course, it's interesting you get into this gig, and now that gets raked across the coals and frustrates family. And my wife, she's out campaigning full time for me now on account of it. But um, I knew that when I got into it. Uh, politics is a rough and tumble business. But when you do have that, employees have worked for me for years, and it's like a big family when you come back to your hometown. Um, was a state legislator for three years gave me kind of a tutorial for this and was a school board member for 10 years. Many people probably don't even know that and you get an earful of something doing that for 10 years. So would have been easy, got three grandkids to you know go back at my stage of the game and I really believe that I've been an armchair politician complaining about the results from DC and many go there with high aptitude but from that same farm system of politics and uh, a guy like me that's done it in the business world, there aren't many there. Uh, Tom Coburn from uh, Oklahoma, who I respected because he was always busting business as usual in D.C., came in yesterday to do a rally and help me. And he would kind of personify kind of what I want to do. And I think if you don't stick your neck out, take a risk, get out of the comfort zone, I'd still be complaining uh, as an armchair politician. And I really think. I can make a difference, and that's kind of why I did it. With all that experience, uh, particularly with the state lawmakers' experience, I, I wonder if you felt like, I know about all there is to it, Indiana, and then now that you've been on this campaign trail, have you actually learned quite a lot more? Definitely learned a lot more, but what a tutorial in a functional state like Indiana. I went there because my constituents in southern Indiana were upset with poor infrastructure, and I live in a county where we've talked about uh, a bypass, a different road. I mean, it's a dynamo of a community, but we're gradually being cut off because we still got the same two-lane road mm -hmm. going through our town in arguably the most uh, commerce-oriented city and county in the state. And they said, Mike, uh, weigh in on that. And uh, we, uh, I co-authored the road bill back in 17 and took flack for that because I'm a fiscal conservative, but I thought it made sense to do something to fix our crumbling you know, roads and bridges. And learned that, authored a, a unique uh, regional infrastructure bill. And we've been talking about that bypass for 40 years. We've got it teed up now by f uh, farming our regional development authority and doing something. And that's what you're going to see out of me. I'm going to do something. I'm going to lead. Uh, this is a much bigger problem. I mean, uh, so much of what's happening in the federal government has been kind of kicked down the road. We laugh off trillion dollar deficits on top of t 21 trillion in debt. And I just think my skill set is going to land to tackling some of those problems. The pursuit of it, when you're running a statewide race versus, you know, a state reps race, which covered parts of four counties, sure. that I knew had a great degree of magnitude that was going to be um, 
something to take hold of. I now know every nook and cranny of the state, and it's a big, beautiful state, a lot of variety, and met a lot of great people doing it. A uh, quick word about motivation before we take a time out yeah. and get into some of the issues of the day. You talked about your grandkids. When you look at the future, are you more fearful about the country for their future, or are you more hopeful? First of all, I'm hopeful, or so I wouldn't be doing it. And I also believe that we all identify the same issues. Uh, everybody wants a great education for their family, their kids. They want health care that's going to be there and not break the bank. And we'll get into that a little later, but I spent so much time on that, taking on the health insurance companies. And I don't think there's a lot of difference in what we want to do. And I think conservatives have a narrow window here to produce and to show the results. Uh, and I'm going to be a different kind of conservative because I can prove where I've done it in state government and in my own business. And I think there's maybe a till 2020 and then you know I hope that the current point of view is still in place and if we don't solve these issues by 2024 we've had our chance and then I think demographics and a lot of the other message which looks to government to get things done I think that's where both Republicans and Democrats have failed with a broken federal system and I think as conservatives we've got a rare opportunity here and if we don't produce will be out on the sidewalk and probably deserve to be so and then I think it's going to be a fearful look about more government to solve the problems that face the country. 